How's it going everyone? My name is Case and today you join me here at Erico Motorsports in Denver where we're taking a look at the brand new Ducati Multistrada V4. This is the new flagship adventure touring bike from Ducati and it is way cool. Tons of tech, tons of performance. So let's give it a look. To properly show off what this new Multistrada is all about, I've got it right next to the old Multistrada. This is the 1260. And from reading the comments on the video that we made when this new Multistrada V4 came out, there's a lot of people that are going to miss the engine in this old 1260. However, there are some reasons that you might actually want to go, well, actually there's a lot of reasons you might want to go for the V4 engine in this new Multistrada, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But here are some quick facts about it. 170 horsepower at 10,500 RPM and 92 pound-feet of torque at 8,750 RPM. So this is a seriously powerful bike. Another big advantage of the V4 in this new Multistrada is that it drops the desmodromic valves and that means that your valve adjustment service only has to happen every 60,000 kilometers rather than every 24,000 kilometers with the old 1260. Now one of the reasons that a lot of people like the previous engine, this 1260, is because it has tons of low end power. 95 pound-feet of torque at 7,500 RPM and just under 160 horsepower at 9,500 RPM. So not only do you get a little bit more torque, but your peak power numbers happen at lower RPMs. However, that's not necessarily a good thing for riding off-road because by all accounts, this Multistrada is an absolute beast. It's more of a street bike with bags, whereas the new Multistrada it's going to be much more controllable off-road. But even though it's got a couple fewer pound-feet of torque, you get more than 10 extra horsepower at the top end, so it's not like the new Multistrada is lacking. Another advantage of this new 1158cc V4 Gran Turismo engine is that it has rear cylinder deactivation. So when you're sitting in traffic, it can deactivate that cylinder and you get a little bit less heat coming up at you as you're sitting there in traffic. You can also see that the bodywork funnels heat away from you, whereas the old model really doesn't. Let's take a little look at some of the tech on this new Multistrada. Now you can see this key can just stay in your pocket. Of course, there's a physical section of the key that you can use both on the fuel cap and on the bags, but you don't actually need to use it to start the bike. All you do is take this switch and oddly enough, turn it to the left and your infotainment screen fires up here. Now this new display is bigger than the old one and it's easier to use. It also has a really nice look to it. Now, here on the handlebar are some of your controls. One of the really nice things about this new model is that you can use a joystick to go through your menus. You also have these two buttons here to change your suspension and engine modes. So if I click the suspension setting, you can see I get to this menu and this suspension is semi-active with auto leveling and you have lots of different options to choose from. So if you want it a little softer, you can choose this rider mode and then there's lots of stiffer settings. We go to the engine mode category. You can see tons of different options and here the screen tells you which of these safety features and technology features are active in different modes. So you have Ducati traction control, you have ABS, you have Ducati wheelie control, your suspension settings, and of course, quick shifter. And all of those will change depending on what mode you select. One disadvantage with this new system that uses a joystick is that your joystick is right next to your controls for your turn signals. So you might accidentally mistake one for the other if you're not paying attention while you're riding, but that is also something that you'll get used to the more time you spend on it. Similar to the new Multistrada, on the old model, you similarly turn this switch to the left. It is still a proximity key, but this screen is a lot smaller. It does have a similar layout and it gives you a lot of information, but just not on as nice of a screen. You also don't have a joystick to control it, so it's not as intuitive to use. Though this may seem relatively minor, the new Multistrada has a windshield, which is very easy to raise and lower. You could just use one finger to do it, so that takes very little effort. If we move over here to the old model, you have to actually pinch this to move it up and down. So it's a clunkier mechanism and it takes a little bit more concentration and more effort. The side storage on the new Multistrada looks very similar to the side storage on the old model. 
However, they have made a number of improvements and the biggest of those is the fact that it is way easy to remove this. I'm holding a camera in one hand, but I was just able to uninstall this bag. Let's see if I can put it back on. Look at that. And that was genuinely my first attempt at doing that. So this bag is really, really easy to take on and off. Now, it's a very similar looking mechanism on this old model. However, this one is much more difficult to remove, so much so that I'm not even going to attempt it because the dealership here, Erico, tells me that they've actually had a number of warranty claims from customers who have broken their bags while trying to remove them. So even if you get that process down, you'll be happy to know that on the new model, it's very easy. Here you can see that the old Multistrada 1260 has a single-sided swing arm. Now, those are good designs and they're functional. However, this dual-sided swing arm on the new model is both lighter and stiffer than the single-sided swing arm that was on older Multistratas. This new Multistrata is one of the most high-tech motorcycles on the market. And like I mentioned, you get all kinds of rider aids such as Ducati wheelie control, traction control, semi-active suspension. However, arguably the most exciting piece of technology that is debuting on this new Multistrada is front and rear radar. So right here, you can see the front radar sensor. And if we move around to the back of the bike, here is the rear sensor. Well, what this is going to do is enable both active cruise control and blind spot monitoring. Currently, the dealership here, Erico, tells me that the blind spot monitoring and active cruise control are not being activated yet on the 2021 motorcycles. However, they do expect for those features to become active later this year. So if you're buying this motorcycle to test that out, don't worry because those are coming soon. Now I wanna talk about a few more features on this Multistrada that make it a really good adventure bike. This new model has a heated seat for the rider right here that you can see is activated through this primary menu using the joystick here on the handlebar. However, the passenger also has a heated seat which they can control themselves using this switch right here. So that's setting one and there is setting two. Now not only do you get a heated seat, but of course you also have heated grips. I wanna end off this video by talking a little bit about pricing on the new Multistrada. The base model starts at $19,995, but if you get a V4S and spec it way out like this one, it can get up to over $24,000. So it's not an inexpensive motorcycle by any means, but if you want some of the most cutting edge technology and performance on two wheels, this is a good bet. If you were hoping to see us get this motorcycle out on the road today, I am sorry to say that the roads here in Denver are still too suspect for me to risk dropping a more than $20,000 Ducati that doesn't belong to me. However, Alex and I are making a trip out to California soon where we will be getting a chance to hop on the new Multistrada on some nice sunny California roads. So be sure to stay tuned for that and also go back to tflbike.com for more news, views, and real world reviews. See you in the next one.